Hi, my name is Joe Coelho. I'm a biology professor at Quincy University. I live in northeast Missouri in a town called Canton. Uh, I love my job because uh, it's the best in the world. I get to teach classes that are outside and I design a lot of my lab exercises, which are really outdoor exercises, with insects. So I get a lot of mileage out of that. We're going to start today uh, talking about the carpenter wasp, which is a species that I've done research on. And uh, I'm the only guy I know who keeps wasp nests on purpose in the backyard. And uh, here they are. These are called trap nests, and there goes one right now. She just left. Uh, they're called trap nests because you can sort of trap the wasps in them. Anyway, uh, what they do is provide a home for these wasps to live in. Now normally this species lives in uh, a burrow that was um, excavated by the carpenter bee, which has great big jaws and can chew through wood. The carpenter wasp can't do that, so it, it uses uh, uh, holes that are already there. Now, I made all of these holes with a drill bit, so I made life easier for them. So what they do is they go out and uh, find caterpillars, and they sting them. And upon stinging, the caterpillars become uh, paralyzed forever. And then the wasp brings it back, stuffs it into the hole, and lays an egg on it. Well, and then they bring a whole bunch of other caterpillars to uh, keep their larvae happy and well-fed. And then they seal off that chamber with mud and uh, <clears throat> then they start packing a new cell for their next larva. Let me take you over here and show you. So leaf rollers are caterpillars that uh, use some web that they produce to roll themselves up in a leaf, more or less like so, uh, and thereby stay hidden from most predators. But carpenter wasps are specialists. They're really good at finding these guys pulling them out and stinging them, whereupon they become a living refrigerator. It wouldn't make sense if the caterpillar were dead because then it would rot and nobody likes to eat rotten meat. But by staying paralyzed, it stays fresh and more or less alive so that the larval wasp has uh, fresh food to eat. All right, let's go back and look at the nests again. So I'm going to take this nest and you can see, I hope you can see, the end of it and it is sealed off with uh, solid mud. Here comes a female right now with a caterpillar. Get that, Bob. See her? There she goes. She's looking for her, her nest hole, which she will locate by landmarks. Okay, she's crawling around. And there she goes down the hole. That was perfect. Wow, what luck. Well. I hope we got that. Well, I'm not sure. So uh, one of the studies that we did was to examine the ability of these wasps to carry loads. Uh, the mud balls that they carry to seal off these uh, holes are, are very light and it's not difficult for them to carry those at all. Uh, to get those they just go out to a mud puddle and uh, scrape up some mud, work it into a ball and they carry it back using their jaws and their two front legs. Well, to carry a caterpillar, they have to use all their legs. And uh, toward the end of the summer, what we found is that some of the caterpillars are so heavy that the wasps can't even carry them. So sometimes you'll find caterpillars that are dropped in front of the nest. Uh, sometimes you'll see a, a wasp really struggling to carry that caterpillar. Uh, and sometimes you see them drop them and give up. Uh, so at, at different times they become overloaded like this and they're unable to carry them. They can't use the tricks that other wasps do to carry extra heavy loads like climbing a tree and flying down under maximum power because their nests are always elevated uh, up high somewhere and they have to go uphill. Uh, so let's uh, open up one of these guys and I'll show you what's inside. I'm gonna just hold it against the concrete floor here. Hope this works. It's been years since I tried it. So we should be able to split the board and pop it open and observe. And what we're finding here is a series of cells. You can see the little walls between the cells 
where the wasp has, has uh, placed the mud and inside, what the heck is that? That is a dried up larva of something, but no um, wasp larvae are in here. So uh, this wasp went to great lengths to uh, produce some young and apparently none none were successful. This is just uh, there's another one of these dried up larvae. I wonder if it's because we had such a hot dry summer that these guys were were unsuccessful. They appear to be all desiccated and dried out. This may be the dried up wasp larva. I'd have to look at it under a microscope. Uh, yeah, I suspect that they just were not successful. We had two months of drought and very little rain and it was uh, so hot that that they probably just croaked. Okay, so it's, it's kind of sad. Uh, I don't feel so bad opening up the nest now. Uh, Alright, so that's the carpenter wasp and uh, Maybe I'll append some stills to the end of this so you can see what they look like.